Hello and welcome back to today's hardware review of the brand new QNAP TS932PX. This is their brand new 9 bay model, and I say 9, it's really 5 with some bits and bobs on the end. Uh, NAS for you guys in the kind of mid-level business area. Home users may be able to take advantage of this and so will prosumers, but this has very much got its eyes on small to medium business users that are looking for a nice, speedy, discreet file processing NAS in the background. It's very affordable, and I say that it is still £600, but for £600 you are getting a device that not only features some pretty impressive external hardware, but some not too terrible internal hardware as well. The support of QTS is greater than I would have liked, and, or would have hoped even, and moreover, the device itself I think represents a nice idea about what QNAP have been doing with the evolution of this series. Now, for those that aren't aware, QNAP has worked on a number of different 9-bay NAS solutions in the past. The first generation, um, a couple of years ago, the 932, the 963, and the 951X, all of them arrived with a few extra bells and whistles, all dis you know, slight distinctions between them. And this device is the one that arrives with, in their latest generation, a 64-bit um, A95, uh, A57 Cortex CPU, which is an ARM 64-bit processor, quad-core at 1.7 gigahertz. This CPU also supporting DDR4 memory with 4 gig by default, all the way up to 16 when you need it. This device here supports a myriad of QNAP's first-party applications that, gen you know, generally you wouldn't expect. The likes of QVR Pro, Hybrid Mount, Virtual JBOD, Hybrid Backup Sync 3, Snapshots, and more are supported by this quite modestly powered NAS. On top of that, you have got the five SATA bays of storage there on the front, and you've got four two and a half inch SSD SATA bays there at the bottom. Now, SSDs in desktop NAS is not a new thing. We've known about it for quite a while. A lot of companies have been doing it for caching, and QNAP are doing it as well with their auto caching system. But you can utilize them for raw storage. If you like, you could populate this device with a bunch of hard drives. Then you can say, I want to use two SSDs for caching and improving their performance, and also two SSDs for raw storage. Now, why would you use raw them for raw storage? Well, because this device arrives with support of both 10 GBE over two ports, so up to 20 GBE with link aggregation, and 2 times 2.5 GBE ports, so 250 meg or combined for up to 500 meg transmission. Now, you can create a very bespoke network environment. You can, if you like, utilize these ports independently for different networks for a failover, or use them on the same network with a supported lag switch to have link aggregation. Yes, the CPU and the memory inside, particularly the CPU, may present a bit of a bottleneck, so do bear in mind, of course that the, CP, uh, the hard drives and the SSDs inside that you utilize will also possibly present a bottleneck to hitting those maximum speeds. But you can still do it with the right storage media and the right combination of hard drives and SSD. So this is a device that although arriving at 600 pounds seems a lot of money, it's worth highlighting that a lot of mid-range to decent four bays retail for about five to 550 right now. And this is a six bay, uh, sorry, um, a five bay with four SSD bays included. And this device with an external output that is pretty impressive and the ability to utilize hybrid storage built in will remove a lot of the internal and external bottlenecks from your uh, network environment. But you have to bear in mind, this is not a perfect machine. That CPU is designed to be affordable and for being a file processing CPU. QTS has a number of very key file management applications, file station, queue search, queue filing, and a bunch of multimedia tools like uh, Multimedia Console, QMaggie for AI powered photo recognition, and the standard photo, music, and video station apps. But this is not a GPU enforced NAS. It doesn't have embedded graphics, it doesn't have a transcoding engine. And although that CPU can use some raw power to do it, it's still an ARM based CPU, which will always present a bit of a bottleneck. So bear in mind, what you're getting right now is a file processing NAS. It's there in the background to uh, micromanage backups or present itself as an intelligent mounted drive or iSCSI for another third party system. So bear that in mind. Utilizing this as your primary NAS in anything more than day to day file handling without the bells and whistles, you're probably going to come away disappointed. 
the 10 GPE, if this was Intel powered, this would be a beast of a NAS if it was an Intel powered CPU. But of course that would increase the price and you'd probably be looking at 750, maybe even 800 pounds for it. So a big old price difference there. Now, previous iterations of this device that we have seen uh, was the early generation, the X, that didn't feature 10, uh, 2.5 GBE and featured a single 10 GBE port. Then you had the 5 GBE variant where they swapped out the 10 for the 5. It's only in this iteration that we're seeing a much, much better uh, middle ground between the 10 and that 2.5 GBE all on the same device. Now, it doesn't have HDMI, doesn't have any of the HD out sort of stuff, so KVM setups for surveillance aren't going to be possible. You need to focus on file management. Utilize virtual JBOD if you want to turn this storage to something accessible and fast elsewhere, or use hybrid mount to port available storage from cloud um, uh, services and other NAS services using the cloud gateway tool and present further storage that this can work with, both in terms of backup with Hybrid Backup Sync 3 and general file management. I personally think this NAS, for the money, is pretty darn good. I think in terms of its build quality, in terms of what it's capable of, and the way they've kind of harnessed the architecture of a tiered storage environment into a far more bigger way. Yes, NVMe might have been nice on this, but again, price, 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 would have shot up. And for 600 nicker, I genuinely think you're going to struggle to find better than this right now. But this has been my hardware overview of the TS932 um, X, uh, sorry, PX. I'm looking forward to seeing what it can do in our software overview that I'm going to be recording in about six hours, so I'll let you know. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Click like if you enjoyed the video. Click subscribe to learn more. Visit the link in uh, to the description to NAS Compares for the full written review. And I will see you next time.